I've had this idea in the back of my head now for over 20 years to do a really cool classic art prog rock arrangement of a famous piece by Ludwig von Beethoven, his Moonlight Sonata, which is originally titled his uh, Piano Sonata in C sharp minor, Opus 27, number two, also known as Quasi Una Fantasia. Um, but Moonlight Sonata was later titled Moonlight Sonata. It's a very famous piece. Anybody who studies classical piano, you know, as a child learns it. It's not that difficult because it's very slow. This is the first movement, Adagio, and it has these slow rolling triplets and a very poignant, sparse melody played on top of this. This is all solo piano. My concept here is to, it was originally inspired by Pink Floyd's Shine On You Crazy Diamond, you know, the first, the intro, that long crescendo, uh, with David Gilmour playing some really wailing leads, high gain, you know, rake, distortion raking into the notes with lots of reverb and delay. Um, I'll show you that part next, but first I want to show you my accompaniment, which is the left hand part. So I have, have this arranged for two guitars. Um, the guitar one, which I'll show you now, is the, uh, the, the rolling arpeggios in the piano, slow triplets. And that's kind of also reminds me of Since I've Been Loving You by Led Zeppelin, you know, that slow bluesy 12-8 feel. And uh, a little bit of We Are the Champions or um, In the Lap of the Gods Revisited by Queen. And uh, so here we go. I'm going to show you. It's, uh, I'm playing with a bridge pickup tone, slightly dirty. And I'm using pick and fingers technique because uh, you have to hit some of the bass notes at the same time that you're plucking it out on a non-adjacent string. And then you just either finger pick or flat pick. And uh, lots of hall reverb because you want to try to um, emulate the sound of a sustain pedal on a piano. Beethoven, this arrangement, he uses it as a piano sustain pedal, which lets notes ring together. You could play up and down the keys and they will all ring. So there's parts where I let go of a chord shape and kind of climb up the string. So uh, here we go. Check it out.
Okay, so this is the first 35 bars of the piece, roughly half of it, a little more than half. It's like 66 bars altogether. And there's a lot of neat stuff going on. I tell you, you know, Beethoven wrote this in 1801, and uh, this predated Chopin and uh, Schubert and all these other great cats that we've looked at recently with other uh, lessons here, and some really cool chord changes. So again, I'm, uh, I'm hybrid picking when I need to. I'm starting off in the C sharp minor shape. I guess I'm kind of um, uh, preferring the flat picked sound to the finger picked sound, you know, because it's a more defined sound and the bass notes sound a little more articulate. And then we drop down to C sharp minor over B and play the same arpeggio on top, but with a lowering bass note. Then we go to A. This is interesting, D over F sharp. And that goes to G sharp seven. C sharp minor over G. G sharp sus4, G sharp 7, and that drops down to C sharp minor again. Here I kind of sacrificed the bass note because it really goes. Ah. It's like, you know, the probability of you not getting that, you know, like 80% of the time is just, it's better to just go. So the ear, in context, you hear that as C sharp minor, right? You're not going to hear that as E6, like a hey, E6 chord, you know? So, and plus I have the, the bass in the back. I notice there's bass and drums in the background. And, um, but that move, just going back a second, from A, little theory here, D over F sharp. Now keep in mind, we're in the key of C sharp minor, so that's actually the flat two chord, right? C sharp minor is the one. F sharp minor would be the four, G sharp major or G sharp seven would be the five chord. So we're going to D, but with a third in the bass. That's called a move that they used in classical music called the Neapolitan triad. And it's a very hauntingly beautiful sound. You know, you're going from the flat two, which is D, and then to the five. So D, D. But what they would do is put the bass note in the first inversion. So instead of having that odd, going, it almost sounds like you're going four minor, five major, one. It's smoother. Get a voice setting. Okay, this is bar five, and then I grab the bass note here. This is where the melody comes in. Da, da, da. G sharp over B sharp. It's a little tricky, but you just have to anticipate. You know, the, the key here is the first thing is to familiarize yourself with all the chord grips used, because then you know that you have got to do a little bit of a stretch there. Rotate your wrist. C sharp minor, and you know it's coming up. G sharp over B sharp. C sharp minor again. Now F sharp minor. You can just do that. Just make sure you don't pick the a or D strings, and then E over B. Now here, I chose to go up to here to play this B7 because I, mean, I could have voiced like this, but that's not the voicing Beethoven used. You know, he had, uh, had that second interval. What I did was use the open strings to buy me a little bit of time to make that shift. So in bar eight, go. Right? That's your opportunity to, to shift, you know, without allowing any of the other strings to ring. Make it as seamless as possible. And now I'm playing the E here, bar nine. Because I'm trying to avoid the squeaks you get, you know, when you shift your hand down the neck. This is uh, bar nine. And now it goes to E minor. Now I was going to go down here, but again, you're going to get a big squeak, so I went. Major. Played E minor like that, with the bass note fingered here so I wouldn't have to move out of position. And now I lightly shift back to G7 over D. This is a really cool move, C. C sharp diminished over B sharp, which you can think of that as C sharp minus seven flat five, and then that would be 
C sharp diminished over A sharp, or you could look at it as A sharp diminished seventh. Notice the contrary motion between these voices. And then that takes you to B minor in bar 13. And this is beautiful, E minor six. E minor six over G. Put a little index finger bar there. And then you got this classic cadence here. B minor over F sharp. To F sharp, the five chord of B minor. And then we cadence, land on B minor. But then, not for long, because then it goes to B major. E minor over B. And these big queen-like kicks. Bar 17, back to B major. E minor over B, E minor. With a G bass note, E minor. B again. A little bit of a stretch here, G sharp to minus seventh. Not too bad. And then, C sharp seven over E sharp to F sharp minor. I mean, these aren't really big, wide chord shapes. You just got to know to uh, put all your fingers down at the same time, and then G over B. Now here, I could have gone, I was thinking about going. That's a tricky grip to get into on the fly. You know, I'm coming from F sharp minor. You could, if you want, substitute that, but I did this, the easy version. Okay, so I'm cheating a little bit. I'm playing the open G string, open B, and then I'm playing two notes on the same string. So you lose a little bit of the, um, the ring uh, sustain pedal effect. That's why I told you to pile on the reverb, right? Because you're going to need that again later. Second half of bar 21, C diminished, seven. And notice these shapes. That looks like the same shape as C sharp seven over E sharp that we encountered in the previous measure. We had this. Right? It's the same grip, but moved over a string. And then F sharp minor over C sharp. Drop the index finger back down. C sharp sus4. Resolving the C sharp. It's a five chord of F sharp minor. We're changing keys like crazy. Okay, that one. You gotta target those first two notes, right? I mean, usually you hit the bass note first, so make sure your fingers, the important ones, land first. So you're going from F sharp minor in bar 23, making this full bar chord shape. Low reach there, and then, so Beethoven's doing the same thing now in a different key, right? Very clever. F sharp minor, D sharp to minus seven, F sharp minor over C sharp. And then here I went. Okay, that's G sharp seven over B sharp. Again, I chose to play two notes on the same string because the alternative is to go. It's like, okay, I can make that grip, but can you make it on the fly? You know, when you're going. Maybe 80% of the time, but boy, wouldn't it kind of suck, you know, when it really matters, right? You're playing it in front of an audience, you know, and, and then one time you go. So that's why I played it safe here. Bar 26. If you're brave, you can go play eight, eight, seven, and then reach back to four. That way all four notes ring together. And then you got to go to C sharp minor, make a bar. F sharp to minus seventh, G to minus seventh. And then, and this is the fun part. It is this long extended pedal point section on G sharp seven. So now you're gonna go, you're actually gonna go. Now here the game is you wanna try to let that bass note sustain as much as possible. Bar 29. Sit back up again there. He did the same thing an octave lower. So first he went. And now you're up to C sharp minor. But with a G sharp 
the fifth in the bass, lends the element of drama. Then he does that an octave lower. Notice I use the open E string because it would be kind of impossible to fret that E note. Make sure you don't pluck that too loud. You don't want it to stand out. You know, you want them to try to be the same volume. Now this is where it really gets fun. He does these, this uh, climbing diminished arpeggio run. You gotta let go of the bass note at some point, but in my arrangement, you got a bass player holding that note. And, um, or if you just pile on the reverb, it's gonna ring a little longer. See sharp minor again. Now this is really cool, bar 34. C sharp diminished seven over G sharp, which is very dissonant. It's like a Bach type of thing. Okay, that's what you had to let go, right? Again, you gotta let go at some point. Again, there's a bass player playing the bass note and the reverb, it's gonna create that sustain pedal effect. And, uh, that's where we leave off because next time, render the piece, it continues from there and goes in some other really cool stuff. So practice this up and uh, get ready for part two.